Okay, so far, all we did was just check it. We're getting a positive field on the top and a negative field on the bottom. We're also getting a negative field on the center plate. Oh, okay. We have our ultrasound hooked up today. And uh, we're going to go ahead and plug that in. So what I'm looking for here is I need that top plate to get down to zero field. And I've been running this a little while and we're going to find out if it gets there. And I think it has to do, I'm having a problem with the ultrasound knocking out the field. So let's see if it does it today. Turn it on. It's still fluctuating, so it's still there, so it hasn't done anything yet. And on the bottom, yeah, we're still hitting that negative charge on the bottom, which is good, which is what we want. I got, I got close to equal charges on both. And right there, we're still hitting a negative charge right in the center of the plate. So, now I said, let's go ahead and turn the dial on the ultrasound to see if we can get this to go. Now, I know the ultrasound will take away the positive on the top plate. The fact that it's not doing it means I have the wrong distance between the ultrasound and the top plate. This is not good. So, let's see if we can. I just turned it. And I have more charge on my top now. We still have a decent charge on the bottom. Okay. I'm still getting negative charge from my center plate. So I turn some more. Well, that knocked down some of it right there. It's still there. Come on, go down. So back up that. And we still have a negative charge on our center plate. For those of you who think your Tesla coil is still AC, let me explain something. AC signals cannot take charge. It has to be a DC pulse signal in order for the center plate to put on a charge. So, otherwise it rejects it. So, oh. I'm not, still not getting all the charge out of that top plate. We got it down. It looked like it was going to zero. Let's see if it does it now. Yep. Went right back up. So I think there's a reason why we're not getting all the positive charge out of the top. And it has to do with air pressure and distance. And like I said, the ultrasound of the top plate. It's also ultrasound of the middle plate. So... I'm going to go ahead and take a reading one last time and then I'm going to shut this down and explain it. Yeah, we're still highly positive on that top. Let's see if I can get the camera to show it to you. The anomaly could be because I'm going in between the two here. And that's probably what it is, is I go in between it and I get that charge. But if I go like this, definitely picking up my positive charge. And we're definitely picking up negative charge. 
And again, I'm definitely picking up a negative charge on the center plate. Okay. All right, let's get this out and I'll explain this to you. So we're having a problem with the field right now. We're getting too much positive on the top when the ultrasound is turned on. So what does that exactly mean? Let's go ahead and go to the whiteboard and I'll show you. This is our gravity flyer right here. Our top, our middle, and our bottom plate. Our ultrasound is here. What am I getting? Right here, as this field comes down, either I'm right here, which is barely above it, or I'm right here, which is barely below it. Now, what does that mean? Basically means if I put like a little cloud around this, some parts are hitting into here, which neutralizes the plate. But it's not neutralizing it completely. I need to go from this or this, it gets around that field, and I need to get to a point right here where this directly hits it, so that this disc right here is 100% in this field. So, how do I propose to do this? Well, the gravity flyer itself has a lot of adjustments in it. So, if I take this top cone right here and I basically put a washer in here, I'll move it up. That'll create a distance here that is larger. So, as I look at this again, my top plate's here. What I'm doing is, I'm, I'm saying this is here or here, I can adjust this up. So I'm going to bring this up, and hopefully by doing that, so let's do that, I can create a field that hits right here. Now, it's a simple way to do it, and it's a way to get us in there. How do we know it's correct? If I can dissolve the field in the top plate completely, I know that I have hit it dead on. I can stop the signal from our DC right here on our positive charge. will go away. So we'll eliminate that, and I know that I have finally collapsed the field. And then I got the distance correct. Now, because this thing has to hit the center plate as well, it's another adjustment. So how do we distinguish that? Because we got one, but we don't know how many there are in this. I usually draw several, but what if there's more? What if there's less? Well, the only way to do that is once you mark your distance and you know exactly where this setup hits this top plate. Now I'm going to have to readjust to hit the top plate at a different, a different distance. So, I'm going to have to adjust this even higher. So instead of my plate hitting here, it'll hit here. What does that mean? Now I can use some math. Now the math comes into place, and if I can tell where two distances hit, but they're not the same, I can make a determination on exactly how many there are. I could tell how many there are and I can tell the distance. Could it still be that there's one extra or one less? Yeah, it could. That's an anomaly I'm willing to live with in this. But it will give me a chance to hit my center plate and my upper plate at the same time. And it'll tell me if I want to hit my center plate of my, excuse me, hit the center of my negative side, then I can do that as well. Now guys, there's a lot of different ways to do this. I could set up a jig and just measure it all day and it'll take me probably about two to three weeks to do that. This right here, hopefully, cross my fingers, I can get it done within a few days and I can check the distance. Now, what are we gonna to have to do? We're gonna to have to take temperature and a regulated environment into account here. If you don't, 
Good luck. It'll, it'll be bad. So what I'll have to do is just buy something simply that tells me the humidity in here. I'm in a controlled environment, completely insulated all the way around, and I have AC and DC, excuse me, AC up here or heater, so I can control the environment and I can get this thing exactly where it is. Luckily, I live in California. The weather, weather is pretty good every day. It's almost the same. Doesn't mean the humidity is exactly the same. So we'll have to check that every time we do it. And if we can get those parameters to be as close to as possible as we can, then we won't be worried about our air and our environment. We'll be worried about distance. That's where I want to get to, guys. I have to get this distance right. If we don't get the distance right, we lose all the effects. So, in order, again, in order to dissolve this top plate here, again, bring that back off. My top plate, my middle plate, my bottom plate, I need to dissolve this 100%. I need this to not have a negative charge on it at all. And this one is going to have negative charge all the time. I haven't found a place where it doesn't have negative charge, but by lining these two up, I may just find a spot that this has no negative charge on it. I won't know until I can get the top two set. Once I have the top two set, it's a simple math formula. I can go through it and I'll have exact distances of where everything goes. So hopefully that helps you guys in this. This is just going to be a process we're going to have to take piece by piece. Fortunately, we have some equipment in here that I, I bought that I can figure this stuff out with. So what's the next thing? Uh, one thing I will show, tell you though, be careful on your oscilloscope because sometimes people look at this the wrong way. This is a field that goes this way, up and down. The other one goes this way, just like that, left and right. Because of that, how they line up in your oscilloscope are going to be different. You're going to see a wave that goes like this on your oscilloscope. Could be choppy, could be whatever, right? When you're not trying to match it, I'm trying to hit it like this. Because they're two different areas. You, this has got to be in 3D in your head, so you've got to see it this way. I'm looking to cut right on these top parts right here. So when you look at that, just keep that in mind. And maybe you might change your oscilloscope on how you're looking at it. I don't know. I don't know that much about you know the oscilloscope as much as most people. But I know lining up two waves like this may be the wrong way to go. Because this is a horizontal and one's vertical. I mean, ver vertical... Horizontal, sorry, my mistake. Anyway, that's what we're looking at here, and this is the point where we need to hit. Anyway, hopefully that helped you guys out today. Hopefully uh, you guys can look at this the same way I'm looking at it. Hopefully we can get this distance thing right. If we don't get it right, there's no point in going any further, guys. It has to be right. All the other tests depend on that field being dissolved. Anyway, if you like what you saw today, please like, share, subscribe, do all those fun things. Have yourself a great day. Thank you.